First, I'd like to give a um, presentation on what happened during the Philippine chairmanship uh, last uh, year in 2017. And as you all know, our chairmanship uh, did not come at uh, an ordinary time because it came during the 50th uh, anniversary of ASEAN. So there was this um, additional uh, pressure to try and produce during this commemorative uh, uh, year for ASEAN. But uh, it wasn't only the 50th anniversary that uh, happened last year. Last year also marked the 40th anniversary of a number of our uh, ASEAN dialogue relations. These were with the United States, uh, Canada, and the European Union. We also marked last year the 25th anniversary of the ASEAN-India uh, dialogue relations, and also the 20th anniversary of the ASEAN uh, plus three, ASEAN, uh, China, Japan, and uh, Korea. Uh, during, uh, well, when we began our chair chairmanship, we adopted the theme Partnering for Change and Engaging the World. Uh, in Partnering for Change, uh, what we really had in mind was to aim for a, a positive change in the lives of the peoples of ASEAN. And in Engaging the World, we uh, wanted to support ASEAN's aim of strengthening its interaction and relationship with our international partners and the international community. Uh, we also had six uh, thematic priorities uh, on, uh, behind our main theme, and this was to have a people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN. We also had the theme of promoting peace and stability in the region. Also, uh, another theme was to promote maritime security and cooperation and uh, also to have inclusive and innovation-led growth, also to promote ASEAN resiliency, and as the uh, final uh, thematic priority, to promote ASEAN as a model of uh, regionalism and a, a global player. I'll go very briefly into the, uh, what was actually achieved or discussed under each of these thematic priorities during our chairmanship. On the first uh, priority, that is a people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN, as you can see, there are essentially four major highlights under this priority, which happened during our chairmanship. I think the, uh, the most important was the signing by the ASEAN leaders uh, in November during the summit, second summit, of the ASEAN consensus on the protection and promotion of the rights of migrant workers. This marked the culmination of almost uh, 10 years of negotiations on this uh, important document, which we hope will um, provide uh, our people with better social protection, earlier access to justice and health services, among others. We also produced a number of other, uh, or not a number of other outcome documents uh, were also delivered during the uh, uh, chairmanship of the Philippines, and this related to the um, civil service, uh, health and nutrition, women, youth, children, gender, and promotion of a culture of prevention. Turning now to the, uh, the next priority, this was a people, uh, well, still part of the people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN. It was uh, during the 30th ASEAN summit last April, uh, we also had uh, uh, the first and only agreement to be signed, actually, by the ASEAN leaders, and this was the declaration on the role of the civil service as a catalyst for achieving uh, the ASEAN Vision 2025. And also in the area of uh, human rights, the ASEAN Intergovernmental uh, Commission on Human Rights, or ICHAR, uh, which was also chaired by the Philippines last year, uh, began uh, the year by discussing a regional plan of action on the rights of persons with disabilities. And the ICHAR Philippines also shepherded the completion of a thematic study on women affected by natural disasters, as well as hosting a workshop on the development of human rights uh, legal instruments. On the thematic priority of peace and stability in the region, the highlights uh, under this particular uh, priority uh, really took place during the ASEAN uh, East Asia Summit and also uh, with our dialogue partners. And here we acknowledge the importance of closer cooperation 
in effectively countering terrorism and violent extremism. At the 31st the SEAN Summit in Manila in November, uh, we also um, uh, discussed uh, the situation in Marawi and the successful uh, liberation of Marawi by the uh, Philippine military. In September, the ASEAN ministers also um, uh, considered the prevention uh, and the uh, combating of transnational crimes and in this regard issued the Manila Declaration to counter the rise of radicalization and violent extremism. And during the East Asia Summit, the leaders came up uh, also with a number of documents and these related to uh, anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism countering ideological challenges of terrorism and terrorist narratives and propaganda. And at the same time, the ASEAN leaders uh, also issued a declaration to prevent and combat cybercrime. During the ASEAN Regional Forum, uh, the Philippines and the EU, uh, as well as Australia, co-hosted a workshop on mainstreaming the prevention of violent extremism in the ARF region, and this was held uh, last February. And at the same time, the Philippines co-hosted with the United States an ARF workshop on the medium to long-term support for victims of terrorism. Also under this uh, priority, the uh, ASEAN stepped up its campaign against human trafficking with the entry into force of the ASEAN Convention Against Trafficking in Persons especially women and children, or uh, active. And this happened in March uh, last year, and this was um, triggered 30 days after the Philippines became the sixth ASEAN member state to deposit its uh, instrument of ratification. So nine ASEAN member states have now ratified the active, <coughs> which is really the first regionally binding instrument on trafficking uh, aimed at uh, combating trafficking in persons. And it aims to prevent uh, not only the uh, trafficking in persons, but ensure just and effective punishment of traffickers, as well as protecting and assisting, and assisting the victims of uh, trafficking. And to implement the ACTIP, uh, ASEAN came out with the Bohol Trafficking in Persons Work Plan 2017 to 2020. Also under the priority of peace and stability in the region, uh, ASEAN reaffirmed its commitment to preserve the Southeast Asian region as a nuclear weapon-free zone and free of all other weapons of mass destruction. And we agreed to extend by another five years, 2018 to 2022, the plan of action to implement the Southeast Asian Nuclear Weapons-Free Zone or SHANFIS Treaty. Going to our next uh, priority, that is uh, maritime security and cooperation. A number of significant uh, developments also occurred last year during the, our chairmanship. Perhaps foremost in this area was when the leaders of ASEAN and China agreed to officially commence uh, negotiations on a code of conduct for the South China Sea, uh, when they also endorsed a framework on the code of conduct for the South China Sea, which was also uh, negotiated and adopted uh, last year. Uh, Singapore was the coordinator for ASEAN on this, and uh, the Philippines will be uh, taking over from Singapore as coordinator for the ASEAN-China uh, dialogue later in the year. The uh, ASEAN uh, leaders also adopted a declaration for a decade of coastal and maritime environmental protection in the South China Sea and we believe this should pave the way for more cooperation to protect the environment in the South China Sea. In the ASEAN Regional Forum, uh, we also continue to discuss and uh, seek areas of cooperation on maritime security. Uh, the Philippines co-chaired with Japan and the United States the ninth uh, ARF uh, ISM on maritime security. This was held in Tokyo last year. And the Philippines also hosted uh, the fourth ASEAN EU high level dialogue on maritime security in Manila last October. In the East Asia Summit, 
uh, maritime cooperation was adopted as a new area of cooperation. And this has been added to the Manila Plan of Action, uh, which is aimed to advance the Phnom Penh Declaration on East Asia Summit Development Initiative. And uh, this was recently uh, completed. Turning now to the uh, priority of inclusive and innovation and growth, uh, the Philippines had uh, pushed for about 11 uh, priority economic deliverables uh, in this area. For example, on trade and investment, integrating uh, medium MSMEs in the global value chains, and uh, developing an innovation-driven economy. Uh, roughly eight of the 11 uh, deliverables that we were hoping for were achieved, and uh, uh, two of them are still uh, technically uh, actually uh, a work in progress, but they actually in many ways have already been achieved. Now some of these uh, deliverables were the completion of the focus and strategic action agenda on investment, the opera operationalization of the ASEAN roll-on, roll-off, or Roro route uh, connecting Davao, General Santos in Mindanao in the Philippines to Bitung, Sulawesi, Indonesia. And this was launched uh, in April and witnessed by President uh, Duterte and President Widodo. Then we have the adoption of the ASEAN seamless trade facilitation indicators, also the development of the ASEAN inclusive business framework to promote inclusive business in the region, and also adopted the ASEAN work program on electronic commerce uh, for 2017 mm -hmm. to 2025. At the same time, uh, we had the uh, successful conduct of the first full and comprehensive country visit exercise under the ASEAN Economic Community 2025 monitoring and evaluation framework. Also last year, the ASEAN adopted the action agenda on mainstreaming women's empowerment in ASEAN and the ASEAN Declaration on Innovation. We also made substantive progress in the uh, discussions on the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Of course, this is still a, a work in progress, but the leaders, uh, the RCEP leaders, uh, held their first ever summit in Manila last month, or uh, rather in November, and adopted the joint statement on the negotiations for the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. And uh, in this regard, they declared that RCEP is a vehicle for economic integration and inclusive development. And uh, I believe there now is a political will to see how they can fast track these <coughs> negotiations and hopefully uh, lead to the adoption of the RCEP uh, this year. The ASEAN Economic Ministers also and their counterparts in Hong Kong last year signed the ASEAN Hong Kong Free Trade Agreement and the ASEAN Hong Kong Investment Agreement. And in sub-regional cooperation, the leaders of the BIMP AYAGA adopted the BIMP AYAGA Vision 2025 and uh, this uh, is the successor document to the BIMP AYAGA Implementation Blueprint. And the new document aims to deliver uh, mainly a more competitive and green manufacturing area, sustainable, competitive, and climate resilient agro-industry and fisheries, as well as uh, promoting sustainable tourism. Also under inclusive and innovation and growth, uh, a number of events were held during the course of the year. Uh, I'll just mention a few. These included the 2017 ASEAN Prosperity for All Summit, then we had the ASEAN MSME Development Summit, the second ASEAN Young Entrepreneurs Carnival, <coughs> as well as uh, the linking of ASEAN MSMEs with ASEAN and global MNEs. So a number of these uh, events were held uh, during the course of the year in 2017. Turning now to ASEAN's resiliency, which was another of our thematic priorities, uh, here, the leaders adopted the ASEAN Leaders Declaration on Disaster Health Management uh, at the ASEAN Summit in November. This uh, declaration will help strengthen uh, the coordination and collaboration among relevant sectoral bodies and their partners 
in enhancing the capacities of the ASEAN member states uh, in dealing and responding to disaster health situations. We, the leaders also adopted the ASEAN Joint Statement on Climate Change to the uh, 23rd session of the conference uh, held in Paris last year. ASEAN also recognized the important role of the ASEAN Coordinating Center for Humanitarian Assistance on Disaster Management, or the AHA Center. Uh, we recognize the oper operationalization of the One ASEAN, One Response Declaration. <coughs> and uh, at the same time, uh, in the Philippines, uh, as you might know, the Philippines is hosting the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, and this, uh, the new headquarters of the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity was inaugurated last July in Laguna, Philippines. The Philippines also gave its full support for the establishment of this new headquarters, and uh, on August 8th, which was also the official day of the uh, 50th anniversary, the uh, ASEAN Center for Biodiversity was awarded the ASEAN Biodiversity Heroes, the champions of biodiversity in the 10 ASEAN member states. All 10 member countries of ASEAN have ratified the uh, ACB, the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, uh, and so now it is in full swing. On our next uh, priority, which was the ASEAN as a model of regionalism and, global, and a global player, uh, this is of course a, a very important priority, and here a number of uh, developments occurred last year. Uh, at the uh, recent summits, the leaders looked at the progress and the direction of cooperation between ASEAN and its dialogue partners, as well as the ASEAN leg mechanisms, that's ASEAN plus three, as well as the East Asia Summit, and successful, uh, meet, uh, successful meetings was held in both of these um, uh, forums among the leaders and also amongst the foreign ministers. I suppose among the high, uh, the top issues discussed were, of course, the uh, great concern over the uh, produ uh, provocative actions of North Korea, particularly the uh, nuclear tests, and the leaders uh, reiterated in various forms their strong condemnation uh, of this, as well as their condemnation of violent extremism and terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. Discussions were also held on the situation in the Rakhine State, where the ASEAN ministers underscored the importance, and the ASEAN leaders underscored the importance of increased humanitarian access to the affected areas, and that assistance be given to all affected uh, communities. Myanmar was urged to continue to implement the recommendations of the final report of the Kofi Annan Commission and at the same time, the ASEAN leaders welcomed the commitment of Myanmar authorities to ensure the safety of civilians and take immediate steps to end the violence in the Rakhine state. Also, uh, in New York uh, last year, uh, for the first time, a uh, resolution of the General Assembly was adopted uh, for a regional organization, and uh, this was adopted to mark the, uh, it was actually a commemorative resolution for the ASEAN, and it was adopted by 67 member states and also had a number of co-sponsors. Uh, well, no, it had 67 member states as co-sponsors and was adopted by consensus. ASEAN also issued an ASEAN Leaders Declaration on the 50th anniversary of ASEAN. And uh, also other statements issued by ASEAN in 2017 on various issues included the ASEAN Foreign Ministry <coughs> statements on the DPRK ballistic missile launch, the situation in the Korean Peninsula, and the nuclear tests <coughs> by DPRK. Uh, we also issued, the foreign ministers issued a number of statements on terrorist attacks, for example, the bomb attacks in Russia, terror attacks in Pakistan and Iraq. At the same time, the ASEAN also issued a chairman's statement on the humanitarian situation in the Rakhine State in Myanmar. On the milestones with our ASEAN dialogue partners, the Manila Declaration on the 20th anniversary of the ASEAN Plus Three was also adopted, and also in last year, ASEAN accepted Turkey's application as the newest ASEAN sectoral 
dialogue partner. Turning now very briefly to the uh, 50th anniversary uh, commemoration, uh, perhaps some of you were there in Manila, here uh, to celebrate the uh, golden anniversary. The uh, uh, Philippines actually hosted a number of activities throughout the year and also activities were held in the various ASEAN member states. And uh, the biggest uh, activity was the grand celebration of the 50th anniversary, which was held on 8 August. And here a number of uh, activities were, were held, as you can see. The main one was a tribute to the founding fathers uh, of, of ASEAN. We'll also remember the 31st ASEAN Summit uh, as the summit uh, which marked the first time that the leaders of the 10 ASEAN member states and the leaders of the 10 ASEAN dialogue partners, Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, ROK, Russia, the US, Canada, and the EU, plus the United Nations Secretary General gathered uh, at one time at a meeting. So now um, let me uh, go to the way forward, perhaps which is the, where we stand uh, now. And uh, as is the case, of course, though uh, there were a number of uh, achievement made, achievements made during the last year, of course the issue now is how to put them into practice and to implement them. And at the same time there are a number of issues which have also been carried forward which need to be addressed as we enter the, uh, this year under the chairmanship of uh, Singapore. Nevertheless, I feel that a number of the uh, uh, thematic priorities that the Philippines had uh, put forward uh, were able to address a number of these issues, and uh, we were able to, as I mentioned, achieve a number of uh, results, but as again, uh, this is just the beginning, and they have to be put into motion. And uh, we think that uh, what we have achieved and our priorities will easily fit in uh, to the um, theme that Singapore has uh, pushed, that is the resilient and innovative ASEAN. And on the part of the Philippines, we of course will be uh, assisting and uh, fully supporting Singapore in its efforts. And um, we will see how we can carry forward what was achieved during our chairmanship and work, at the same time work on the new areas which will be uh, developed and pushed by Singapore during its chairmanship this year. At the same time, we are fully committed to working with our dialogue partners and, uh, of course, our other ASEAN partners. Maybe uh, I'll just give a very brief uh, indication what, in my view, are some of the issues that we will continue to be faced with or have to uh, further build upon in terms of ASEAN cooperation uh, and addressing them <coughs> through ASEAN cooperation. These include issues such as terrorism and violent extremism, uh, the war against piracy, armed robbery against ships and other issues of concern in, in Southeast Asian waters, uh, combating illegal drugs and their sale and trade in illegal drugs. Then of course we have the situation in the South China Sea the situation in the Korean Peninsula, the need to develop greater regional economic integration, especially through the completion of negotiations on the, uh, on the RCEP, and uh, how to deal and address growing sentiments uh, of anti-globalization and protectionism, promoting innovation-led economies and highlighting the role of MSMEs, how to promote greater connectivity as well as disaster management and humanitarian assistance, and perhaps at the same time, how to make ASEAN really uh, people-oriented. These are some of the key uh, issues which are on the table, and I think will remain there for a number of years, so it's important that ASEAN continue to uh, uh, work together as ASEAN and with our dialogue parts to see how we can uh, address this. Uh, as I mentioned earlier also, as far as ASEAN is concerned, uh, the Philippines, we will be taking over the country coordinatorship of the ASEAN-China Dialogue this August, taking over from Singapore. And uh, as I mentioned briefly, uh, high on this agenda is not only the need to promote ASEAN and China relations, but 
uh, really uh, uh, to begin the negotiations, serious negotiations, towards a code of conduct of parties in the South China Sea. So lastly, let me just end by saying that the uh, Philippines will be doing its best to uh, continue uh, the important task of raising awareness uh, ASEAN amongst our peoples, and especially um, to promote greater understanding of how ASEAN works, and probably even more important, how ASEAN's activities will redound to the benefit of its peoples. So with those uh, words, I'd just like to end my uh, presentation and to again thank you very much for your kind attention and again uh, to say what a great pleasure it was to have spoken uh, at SAS. Thank you very much.